Hello and welcome to Manly 16 Foot Skiff Club's Heat 3 of their club championship for the season 23-24. I'm James Beery and joining me in commentary today we've got Robert Napper and uh, another bloke that we all know, <laughs> James Doran. Does welcome. Robbie, welcome back. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Thanks guys. It's good to be here, Jimmy. So, get the old band back together. But we're in for a bit of a treat today. We've got the Flying 11 state titles hosted by the Manly 16 Foot Skiff Club, which you can see there on screen. So we'll keep an eye on them. They're the, uh, the future of 16 Foot Skiff sailors, we hope. Um, a lot of time and effort invested into the Flying 11s. Does you managed to jag a win in them as well? Yeah, I came up through the uh, Sabos and then progressed into the Flying Elevens and really as a junior they were a great class to be a part of. Good um, good friendships made um, and, and had some really good coaching in those uh, years growing up and uh, put me in a, a good spot to progress then into the, the skiffs and um, yeah, you know, some great sailors have come out of there and it's great to see all those uh, young and up-and-comers out there today. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. And Robbie, young Ash, he's the last one of the Napa clan left in the, uh, the 11s. He is, yep. Just got underway in the second heat now of their state championships. So he had a bit of a, bit of a rough first race, had a big swim, um, managed to fight his way back. Um, but it's really good to see some strength in numbers. I think we've got 49 boats in this state championship fleet that everyone's watching right now. That's um, pretty impressive, isn't it? Like, you know, I know back when... Believe it or not, I actually fitted in one of those things. Um, <laughs> many, many years ago. <laughs> many years ago. Well, I, was, I was pretty lucky. I had the world's smallest skipper in Lee Napton. So, um, yeah, we often go up to the presentation at the end of the day and the, everyone will go, oh, well done, Lee, to go shake my hand and go, no, that one's Lee. Um, but, so, but, yeah, like, you know, you got the likes of Lee Napton came through these, um, the Turner brothers. Nathan Outridge. Nathan Outridge. Scotty Babbage. Scotty Babbage, yeah. Nathan Wilmots. So yeah, good, good young class and very, very competitive class. But so and they provided about, I think, 75% maybe of our senior sailors have come through Flying Elevens. So it's yeah, been well, a great pathway class for Manly. Cool. Continues to be. Yeah, well, back in the day when like we didn't have the 13s to progress through, or Dos did, but um, yeah, we were chucked in as fourth hands in the in the 16s to sort of cut our teeth, and then um, and we grew up and become big boys and sailed three up. But, um, so talking about the 16s, um, as I said, Heat 3 got a very narrow leader in sail racing. Um, Felix and the boys have done a pretty amazing job on day one. They had, um, there's a overall results up on the screen there. So you got, um, you got sail racing followed by motion signage. And signage. Sutec, Red Pumps, Cunningham's, IME, Botany Access, and then in eighth, Moon and Yachts. Ruffy had an absolute day to forget Doz. He uh, swam at both top marks, I think, both yeah, races. Two First races. time around the top mark, very hard to come back from there. Yeah. Sorry to hear about that, Ruff. <laughs> I, I wasn't watching, mate. I, uh, I, uh, I don't tune in every weekend, but yeah, it's pretty hard when you get around the top mark and, 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 and sink it. Um, you know, it's hard to, hard to come back from that. You never did that to us anyway, Dawes, did you? Oh, <laughs> can't remember the times that I've done that, but I'm um, sure there's been one or two. No, I, had a, I had a good weight at the back of the boat to keep the nose up on most bow ways, so I, I, I can't recall ever pitching the boat at the top mark with you on the back. No, mate, no. It was safe there. So, and then uh, in the 13 foot skiffs, we've, um, I think we've got uh, the, um, that's pretty tight as well. I can't remember who's in the lead of the 13s, but um, by memory. Doesn't really matter at the moment anyway. It's such early days in the series. It's gonna, it's gonna be mixed up. Harkin is leading. So one, they'll have a feeling skipper today because Heidi Bates, who normally drives that, is steering her flying eleven in this state championship, and she just picked up a third in the first heat. So I'm not sure who Orlando's managed to get on today, but I is see Orlando them back? Up. Oh yeah, Orlando's back, and I did see the boat in the park, so I assume it was going out. 
Um, but as of last night, he hadn't found a fill-in. But that's incredible. Like she's she's in, involved with the 13s and still um, at the top of the division with the 11s. Like I, I only ever sort of progressed 11s, 13s. I never sort of switched in between. So the fact that she's you know already sort of you know jumping across at her, her early years, she's going to be a, a, a wonderful uh, up and comer, I'm sure. Absolutely. So just just looking at you, Jimmy, like the, the breeze is up around 20 knots already and it's only sort of um, midday. I mean, there's going to be a lot of action out here from um, just what we're seeing here, just boats sitting around and the 13s and the 16s and the 11s. It's, it, there's, there's plenty going on. People tipping in, there's big roundups, there's lots lots happening on the water. Yeah, mate. It's um, well, Luckily, the tide's turned to... Uh run in so that'll take a little bit of the lump out and um, I think you'll find we might see by the end of the day probably 23, 24 constant with a few little fresh lines in, in between. Um, definitely a comfortable number two rig go. Yeah I don't think we'll see any big rigs out here. You'd be a brave person to put a big rig on. And, and Jimmy, Rob, I've been out of it for a few years now with the 16s, but what's what's sort of changed? I see all these 3DIs with Norse involved, and I mean, I was back around when we had the old alloy rigs, and uh, I think they've all now gone carbon. And I mean, what, what's what's changed since I've been around? Yeah, probably the carbon, look, well, carbon rigs, carbon poles, carbon booms, all the spars. So we've lightened everything up a bit. There's obviously been a lot of development with the sail technology, but to be honest, there's you'll have a look and see these the profiles of some of these mains, the SKE, compared to some of the the uh, true flow rigs. Um, they look very different, but at the end of the day, they're all going pretty much the same speed still, which has really been the beauty of this class. Yep, and uh, yeah, and today we're um, obviously with Manly hosting the Flying Eleven State titles. Middle Harbour Skiff Club has kindly reached out the Olive Branch to Manly to for the 16s and 13s from Manly to join the Middle Harbour guys for the day, guys and girls. So that's um, it's a real busy little part of the harbour for today. There's um, you know, as Rob alluded to, there's nearly now, almost 50 flying 11s out here. We'll probably have close to 40-ish, they're about 16-foot skiffs and, you know, around the 20 mark of 13-foot skiffs. There's also another regatta on in the Sound, which is where we oh. traditionally race, which is the, uh, the, the lasers have the Battle of the Sound with something like 70 lasers out here. Um, and then you've got Middle Arbor Yacht Clubs also out here having sprints in the middle of the Sound because they didn't want to do a offshore race. So there's, um, there's plenty going on and it, I think it's a, a day to keep your eyes out of the boat. Does you were really yeah, good at keeping your watching, eyes out of the boat. Watch, watching the leader in the Fly 11s go around the drive mark and uh, looked like he put in a really nice job and just heated up a bit too uh, late out of the job and just went straight in. So. Um, yeah, technical boats to fly 11s, and it was easy to put them in, that's for sure. What's your young class? With all this traffic, does like, are you, like, off the start line, are you thinking trying to steer clear of the traffic, or we're just going to go and apologise to everyone like we used to when us three sailed together. <laughs> it was ne ne never our intention, Bureau, to get involved with other boats. But, but, um, but yeah, look, I think Man Manly's a really different track compared to the 18s. The 18s are got a lot more ferry, a lot more boat traffic, a lot more harbour traffic to contend with. The Man Manly's a little bit more of a, a, a quieter track overall. Um, but today's, today's a bit of an exception. You've got yachts, you've got the Fly 11 division, you've got 13s, you've got extra uh, 16s on the start line with the, the Middle Harbour fleet. Um, I, I always try to keep it quite simple out of the first um, couple of attacks. You want to get out, of the, get out of the start, try and have a lane to tack, or if not, try and get yourself set up to then tack back into um, Dobroyd Head there. 
Um, I, I was always a big sort of believer working up that headland and then ducking across to the sort of toilet roll over at Manly and then working the right hand side. But yeah, just trying to get out of the box, get your get your legs going and, and, and try and sort of get on a go down a good tack on, on port and you know that sort of sets your race up. It doesn't sort of get you across the line because there's a lot of sort of overtaking lanes on this nor'east track but it definitely sort of you know gets you in a position to hopefully sort of be in the top few around the top and then you can sort of reassess your game plan and um, you know start chipping away a bit more through the boats throughout the, the second part of the, the track. With this breeze who are you liking Robbie? Uh, the Moon is carrying some pretty good form in after last week. Um, they've got a pretty nice weight distribution on that boat now and they are sailing pretty well. Um, have we got Brett back on the Imagine signage today? I, th I, I think I saw, I think I saw Big Brello on, yep. Yeah, well they'll, they'll definitely give it a nudge. Haven't seen, have we seen Sail Racing out here yet? I think they will, they're obviously carrying some good form from the first week. Those guys don't tend to do a lot of sailing, they just turn up for the championships now and they, uh, they always seem to be on, so. Ah, there we go. There you go. In. Harry West. Harry West is racing. steering this sail racing. He's pretty handy. <laughs> I, I did tune in last week, Jimmy and Rob. Um, the SKE boys, they, they had a really good, uh, was it the Port, Port Jackson? Port Jackson. Yeah. So I, I watched the, the latter part. I, and you boys would give me a hard time that I <laughs> used to uh, pack up the boat early and, and head off. But, but watching those guys... Um, it wasn't working, a lie. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying it was. But, um, it, um, it was great to see you know, a young guy on the back with old Nico's, Nico's young fella. And uh, mate, they, were, they were making really good inroads up that last uh, work to the finish. Um, so I, I wouldn't count those guys out. They, they seem to be quick up wind. It'll be interesting to see how they, they're placed um, in the mix, you know, in the first part of the race. Yeah, well, they backed up from that Port Jackson Championship, and I'm pretty sure they went out and won the Port Hunter regatta up in Newcastle uh, maybe last week or the week before as well. So uh, Banjo's finding his feet in that boat, uh, and he's getting very comfortable with the two guys he's sailing with in Scott and Joel. He's got yeah. a big, big, physical, a very capable crew. Mm. Um, they're going to... Well, I expect them to put on a pretty good show come the Nationals. Well, I, I caught up with uh, Scotty a couple of weeks ago at um, Jamie Woods' engagement up at Newcastle, and he, he, he sort of, you know, was talking about young Banjo, saying that he was, you know, a good up-and-comer and somewhat like maybe us at the start. You know, I just uh, joined you guys, an established crew, which Banjo's done, and, um, you know, already already doing some, some great stuff. So I... I I hope that um, that continues for them and you know, today will be a, a good test for them. So, yeah, for the viewers, as, uh, as Dolls just alluded to, SKE Electrical from Belmont has come and uh, joined us for the day, so always welcome. Cunningham's on screen. Big Paulie know, oh, McKenzie. I've left them off my list, didn't I? That's, that was probably silly of me. And they, they've been down at Bazers this morning getting that second rig tuned up as well, so they could certainly give it a nudge this afternoon. They've got plenty of horsepower. Especially with the tune-up from Baz. We love them. Love the banter when you go and see Baz too. <laughs> you, when you. did you ever come with us? Doz? It was always <laughs> me and Napa. But, um... So in the 13s, Robbie, uh, I know you've been working very hard on a, a Friday evening with all the likes of, um, you know, Phil Harmel was down there yesterday, you've had Matty Stenter, yep. all the all the gurus. Yeah, had quite a few guys, had Dolly down last night as well actually, it was quite quite nice of him to uh, to make an appearance and give us a hand, um, but yeah, we've had a, a very good range of the 16 guys and girls coming down to, to lend a hand and, and uh, use their experience to, to help get these 13s improving not only their boat handling, but a, a lot of the real race strategy and and little boat on boat tactics so um, the guys that have been coming out seem to be improving um, and I'm expecting to see this uh, the training grow uh, as we get closer to the nationals. That little boat there on the right of screen Ebix they've been out twice this week yep um, Gemma and um, and 
James. James, the brother. Yep, Hoppo. Uh, hey, um, we had them out last night. They were sailing very nicely. Really working on the finer points now, catching the waves, really working for height, going upwind and, and soaking, soaking their depth downwind. It'll be good to see them put it into practice today. I've just seen old, old, old Clint out there, our arch nemesis, uh, back in the day. He's, he's out there still plugging away, which is good to see. Uh, he was a formidable uh, competitor in the uh, in the manly days where we were sailing, wasn't he, boys? Yeah, absolutely. Great sailor. I think he's just having more fun now, Doz, with, uh, with Phil and, um, and Berkey. Yeah, and I'm, not out, I'm, I'm not out there for him to beat up on me anymore. <laughs> Everyone loved you, Doz. I loved everyone too, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> There's the employment era, the, the young boys with... Uh... We've got Nate Lilly on the back today. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. change the skipper there, but looks of it. Saw him in the in the club when we were getting the Flying eleven sorted out, so he was looking forward to it, but they're going to be lacking a little bit of weight today, I think. The Harkin just went past us, and... Um... With Jess Isles steering it oh, in good. the 13 foot skips. Well, she's been helping out too. I haven't had her in any of the trainings yet, but she's uh, she's done a couple of nice fill-in roles on a on a Saturday. So it's been good. Our five minutes have just popped up. They've changed the uh, start flags too since you were probably last sailing them, Dos. Yeah, they've changed a little bit. I wouldn't know. Uh, I didn't know what they were <laughs> doing back then. So if they've changed, it makes no difference. Now, difference, difference well, I don't. That was a proper stitch up. <laughs> yeah, no idea. <laughs> that was your job, Rob. Just hit the hit, hit the hit the clock, and, and I've got some idea. Yep. I just saw uh, Cookie go past. Yep. Um, great family of the 16s. Um, Great to see Huey's name out on the uh, the rescue boat as well. Yeah. Um, but the Cookie Boys have uh, obviously great sailors, and actually, um, I got my first gong with I think Cookie put me on the worst 16, and I had Big Sven swinging it down in a not too dissimilar nor'easter, and then Brent uh, Dennis on the bow, and you know we had a, a good uh, competitive second our first run on that boat. So. Um, yeah, great, great family, the Cooks, and wishing them all, all the best. That's a great shot there from the drone. Look at all the action on the harbour. So that's three big fleets. Can't see too many of the 16s, but you've got a lot of flying 11s and a big fleet of the Ilka 7s out here today. Yeah, plenty on, isn't it? Yep. Busy end of the harbour. So today we're actually, as I said, we're racing with Middle Harbour. 16 foot skiff club. Pete Timworth has kindly extended the olive branch. We do a lot together between Manly and Middle Harbour. And um, so the course for today is a nor'east course, which is we're starting just here, sort of off Grotto Point, which is where we'd normally start as well. Work up to their top mark, which is sort of in line with Reef Beach thereabouts. Run back down to the YA mark at Balmoral. They're doing that three times. And then the last time they just do a little short work back up to just off the naval base. And then um, That'll give the Manly guys a bit more of a, a learning lesson on upwind sailing to get home from down there in best part of 24, 25 knots. Starboard course as well, which I'm hoping it doesn't catch too many of them out of the top mark, but it's going to be very interesting if we see someone take that to port and go head-to-head -head with the fleet. Well, remember we had that with Craig Nichols on the Typhoon at Balmoral that time. Yep. It was like... You're like, no, look, I can't exactly what you said, but... <laughs> Don't. Uh, yeah, we'll do the edited version. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there'll be plenty of beeps in it, but, yeah, we uh, exchanged pleasantries with Craig Nichols one day when that all sort of happened to us, but not to worry. Not long to go now, just over, just over 2 minutes 15 till we're underway here with the 16-foot skiffs, and the 13-foot skiffs will start. Tinny's trying to push them out as quickly as possible as well. Um... The Flying 11s, they're just on there. They do, I think, they still do a triangle hot dog triangle or something along those lines, don't they, Rob? Yep. So hot they're dog. just on their, down, their hot, hot dog hot leg dog now. Okay. 
here's the new presidential boat for Manly 16 foot skiff club just coming through the Rolfie's entourage to see. <laughs> Quietly happening, it's doing it now, not in two minutes' time. Exactly. It would be causing absolute chaos. The mighty YOLO, you only live once. Now, Bureau, we've got a bit of breeze on, but, you know, we've, we've had some pretty strong nor'easters back in our day. I remember, you know, a, a, a few weeks out from the Nationals, we came out training, and it was an absolute <laughs> black nor'easter. And I think we got out and uh, we are a bit overzealous. I think we got to about Dobroyd and said, oh, hey, boys, I think we knocked it off here. We, were, we had plenty on. Yeah, the, I think the International 14s were setting up that day for a gather, weren't they? We did. I, we got to the bombies and I just uh, pulled it down and said, we're not, we're not we're hanging not out here, any boys. Further. No, that's all right. <laughs> we want to right. keep this boat in one piece. We're going to go home. So not, not quite as fresh as that, but it, 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 it's a good 20, 22, 23 in the gusts here today. Um, so these, these crews have got their work cut out. That's for sure. Inside the final minute now. There's the red pumps with Zoe Dransfield steering while her brother is over in Bali having a bit of a schoolies surfing trip. We've got a red pumps red looking for a port handed down the other end of the line. They're all stood pretty well off here. It's Matt Triglane's on the red pump red today too. Oh, no, they're in all sorts there. Looks like it's going to be a clear start from uh, the look of things. Red, red pump's down the end, maybe over. Yeah, he's over. Yeah, he's got to go back. Red pump's with the dot, he's over, but otherwise all clear. I think they've, I think they've given him the all clear though. Oh, good old manly 16s, you know, must be... Must be, uh, must be a little handshake under the table on that one. Now, Elamie's a little bit late here. Um, old Treno, he wouldn't be happy. No, they're probably not in a bad spot on that line. At least they've got a clean lane. Yeah, but he's, he's throwing you know, a good, good 50, 100 metres away. And yeah. you know, on a good Norris track, it's, it's, uh, you don't want to be throwing or giving any of your competitors a, a head start in this, this course. No. I think the, fluid, the fluids won that start probably, they've come out pretty nicely. The guys down to Lewis are just starting to lift around his bow now. The Moonen and we've got the Eric Storage, Middle Harbour's top boat. Nathan Edwards, I've got a feeling Scott Cotton's steering that today. I don't yeah, not sure Scott if Cotton, he's, he's on there not, full not, time. He's on there all, all time, full time. He's Alex. Alex. It's good to see him back in skiffs. He's a, he's a very good 13 sailor, I'm not sure how much time he's done in the 16s. We're both keeping a loose eye on the middle harbour fleet when we've been out here, like whether we're filming the, doing the live stream or we're out here doing photos each week and, you know, they're, they haven't had it all their own way but they're starting to click together as a team and you can really see that as a, uh, as the season progresses and, you know, they just need a little bit of um, competition which is great that, you know, the two clubs can combine today and do this. Um, now getting close to the Dobby heads here, Jimmy, like you don't want to be pushing too much further. It's almost like the Bradley's head uh, Bermuda Triangle, you know, you push too far, you, you can get a bit header and then fall in. But I, I think the Ruffy's uh, tacked quite well there, he's on a good line. If he just ducks chunk, cutting hands here, he's, he's got a good clear lane. So we'll just see how he's... Out of place here, but the cunning hands looks like they're going to be leading in the race here. They have just put the hammer down there. Oh, Paulie on the back, eh? Yeah, well, but how, how long will Paulie last? We'll see. He'll, he'll get him to the top mark in good shape, and we'll see how many more works he's got in him after that. Here he, he goes. Uh, on the good. face of a really nice line there, too, where they put that. Yeah. And that's the option you've got when you're in front. Uh, great positioning there by them. There's the old fire truck too in the mix. That was a great ship. Another great drone shot there. The Eric Storage has got a good good bit of pace there. He's skittled away pretty well off the line and uh, mixing it there with Moonen quite quite well. He's in my view. He's got some gauge off Moonen there too. Hmm. Nice. So that's the thing. I feel like sometimes tacking about it, tacking out early here, you can sort of lift back up out in front of people as you get out to the um, middle of the harbour and these guys up up high they can sort of be in a bit of fickled wind and they start dropping back down into them so 
It'll be interesting to see how Canyon holds their line across here. Yeah, I think Cunningham's dodge so sort of just, you know, obviously new combination. They had Alex Chittenden in the middle last year, and they were pretty yeah. electric and, you know, just trying to get that com crew combination right with yeah. with Paulie McKenzie jumping in the uh, on the sheet. Um, this sort of weather Paul loves, as, as we all know, just a big unit just leans back and pulls strings harder and harder. A bit like you, mate. Well, I'd, 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 normally run out, I'd run out of puff by here anyway, Doz, you know that. You, you yeah. folks had to carry me. You were good when it was top end big rig and top end little rig. <laughs> well, I had no choice. And <laughs> hey, Robbie, you're, uh, you've had a bit of an injury this year and you, you're coming good, I hear. Yeah, working hard to get back on the water. I'm not sure quite when that's going to be yet, but um, yeah, everything's going as, as well as could be expected. So what's the program for you? You, you plan to get back on army or... Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, will, I will be at some point, just uh, not sure quite when that's going to be yet, whether it's going to be this side, this side of the Nationals or whether I'll be holding out and, yep. uh, and jumping on for the back end of the season. And uh, they've got Shawnee Moran on, I uh, said, a good old... old uh, Childhood uh, friend of mine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He's a good, good hand. And, good hand. Uh, he's, yeah, he's doing a fella. good job. Doing a good job. They're just down a few kilos, so I think they're just uh, Hugh and, and Trent are trying to get used to that um, sailing around with a little bit less weight in the boat. Yeah. And what's the what's the crew weight difference between when you're there and you're not there? It probably dropped about ten kilos. So, and I mean, we, I guess we picked up. Picked a bit of weight up getting Hugh on board this season compared to having uh, Sarah on last year or, or Dan Links prior to that. So we got Eric's, that's Eric's on screen there. Yeah, leading that, that pack, well and truly. <laughs> they are, and just off shot, we got another pack just to windward of them. Oh, back on screen now, actually. So the Imagine signage didn't get off the line terribly well. They're going to have a punt out to the east now and uh, see if they can pick up a line inside these guys. Tight cross coming up here. So Cunningham's still leading yep. this stage. Still very tight here, and we're going to see a couple more shifts before we get to the top mark. So, here's our chasing pack. So, so, so from experience, you get up here in the uh, the top end of Manly, and you you're starting to sort of find a few different lines. It's a bit more flat of water. Yeah, you know, it can it can get a little bit tricky to pick. Um, Cunning hands have done a good job there. They've picked up a good line. Now they're sort of getting back out in the middle of the track. They're moving really nicely through the water there too, the Cunninghams, and they're just, just putting themselves between the top mark and the fleet now. They're going to get across the bows of those, those few boats that got east, east just to try and consolidate on the position that they've got themselves in. It's quite nicely sailed. So road racing's in the mix. Just went, they just went out of shot, but there's Cunningham's. I think you'll find they will lead around this top mark, which um, they'll be pretty happy. Got SKE off to the right there, so they're just starting to get their groove on. I'm not sure where they ended up off the start, but um, once they get into more breeze, they're certainly uh, certainly going to give these front runners a nudge. ruffy has got an important cross coming up here. He's got Eric's and a, a big bunch of boats coming through him. It's just, just, had to, just, just had to duck. He just had to duck Wilmot as well. So Wilmot's uh, starting to get, get his wheels on and uh, he's, he's coming through now. Cunningham's is actually looking really good going through the water there. There's yep. Moon and Yachts, Daniel Turner. They are. Cunningham's are one of the heavier crews, so they might have a slight disadvantage down wind um, with everyone with their little rigs in. Um, probably not quite fresh enough up the top here to uh, to negate that weight difference. Yeah, well, when you were saying that, like, yeah, you know, not as windy up here, 
yeah, the crew's got to go through all the motions of changing gears and. Now, looking at the breeze as we're at the top mark, you're probably only down to 15 knots. And I remember when we were sort of heading up these uh, top end of the course, we'd have the, the canoes up a little bit more, we'd even be stomping on the board, and you know maybe we're not as far up as where we'd normally finish on a club course, but um, you know there's definitely a lot of gear changes needed, and um, you know makes 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 the skipper think. And I know that you're always on to me, Rob, about you know changing gears and making sure the boat's you know, constantly quick at this top end of the course. Yeah, it's imperative, isn't it? Does like the um, you know for the young kids that may be watching back. Cunningham's, I reckon. Well, you could. I just heard Paulie from off the boat here. We're hooing, so he'd just be happy that he's beaten his old skipper in Daniel Turner on the moon and yachts around the top mark. Yeah, you'd like that. Get a photo. Imagine Simon has made some nice moves up through that sort of tricky uh, top end of this track as well to get up into third. It's very much in the mix. Followed by SKE and Eric's, who've just gone off shot. And Clint, too. Yeah, he's done a good job getting up here as well in fifth. I think that's best Six. Bezo's done in the two seasons, hasn't he, <laughs> the whole clinic? Bit of a bit of a cluster up the uh, at the set with all the boats coming around together, but they're getting there. Just off screen, we've got Moon has taken the early jive back into the uh, into the Dobroyd headland here, looking for a little bit more pressure to try and get around the bow of Cunningham's. Beautiful jive off the rocks there. Oh, I put the mockers on you, sorry, Matty. <laughs> it was a nice entry, just, just missed the exit. Cunningham's have gone back on top of Moon and now. See who's got the gauge. Great shot to pick up the angle differences in the gust there. Let's see, Moonen's got right away on the bricks. Huge gain to Moonen, you'll see it. Yep. Massive angle differences there too, you can see. Cunningham's just come up and out of that uh, out of that line that Moon has made able to carry through all the way to the Bombora. There's current yeah, club championship current leaders. Club champ, yeah, leaders. Just, just came off shot. Yeah, they really haven't had a, a drop at the moment, have they? Like the uh, so racing boys, no. so two good results. It's got modern concept constructions, they're carrying that slightly bigger little rig. Seems to be serving them okay so far in this race. They're looking really nice, aren't they? Jared on the back. Just going in for a drive now, here they go. Very safe. Yeah, good job. Nicely done. Just a little bit too close to the shore here. You need to get out again. And SKA look like they're just out far enough. They need a good, good, good fresh, good out in the good fresh stuff. So you imagine Sina just got down inside the moon in there, and they're starting to put a bit of pressure on Ruffy now. He's going to be. They're going to get him in a challenging spot to be able to jive when they get down to Goro Point here. Ruffy's just had to soak to get it below a 13 that's in the drink as well, so that's not going to help him. Never helps. Just wiped off a little bit of speed there. Certainly not in a position to jive now, looking at that shot. Oh, Paulie and the Cunningham's out in the middle there, they're on a screamer. 
Look at him. He's off. Just got word in from uh, from Wargy, Adam Rowlandson. The fluid 13 foot skiff has a broken rudder, unfortunately. Oh. Bad luck for them. SK going in for the jive here. It's a bit slow. Get the oh. oil there, a bit loose there. It's nicely saved, maybe. Yeah. Not the prettiest, but it was successful. <laughs> Never in doubt. Yeah. Now, Murn has managed to get up in front of the imagined signage here. This is what happened there, whether the imagined had a bit of a moment or if Moon has managed to get on the front of a, a pup above them and, and some, soak down inside. Some pretty hot ones, mate. I just had to step on the gas. I had fluid, right, fluid building right up the, the, uh, the back door of the. Um, Camera boat, so I'm in mean the MCC by the look of it. Oh, Kenny Hibbs are back in front there. Of, uh, They've taken that one through the middle, haven't they? Image of Batch smoking. This is going to be a very. I told you. Uh, Ruffy's just oh. going to cross him. And he is on an absolute screamer down there. Those guys that went a bit further out in the middle of the track, they were just absolutely honking down the middle. Cunningham's in for the drive. Nice safe one there from Mike. Great job from him. You got red pumps and Eric's stories so like pretty hot racing here. Jesus snakes and ladders at the front of his pack. Awesome racing. It's just good positioning there by Ruffy and the Cunninghams, you know, like they just let let Nathan go a little bit early. They can see the sort of jive angle. Ruffy's gone back inside, just covering him off nicely, set himself up for the second work. So, good, happy, good, good skills there by the, the boys on Moonen. Just happy, in here. happy to go one in there, the Moonen, just to soak down to this mark, and they've just defended that front position nicely. Cunningham's just went a bit too far there on that last job. <laughs> Moonen's jumped up one spot. Imagine signage. G'day Scotty, I know you watch everything that we do. Great sponsor. Cunningham's third, Red Pump's fourth, Eric Storage, great job. Fifth, SKE Electrical from Belmont, well done. Young Banjo. MCC coming in very tight on this mark now. Jackson's got some work cut out for him. Got a spinnaker shoot on that one, mate. Yeah, oh, got about that. And the Army's made a good comeback here. They've just tagged onto the back of this front pack. Picked up a couple of spots down that run. And there's Sail Racing. And that runs out our current top 10. All very tight. Cold Sioux Tech boys back here. There's a car racing on last night, late last night. Is, it, is that their excuse? I'm not sure. They look like they got their normal crew on today. Yep. And out back, Marine, Georgia, Clancy. Young crew of Outfus Consulting. Kenny Walken, who was up the bow on that one? It was Rob, Rob Gruder. Yeah, I think Ed normally does the bow on that. I'm not sure if he's on there today. Mighty Fireball. Made it. Great sponsor. <laughs> Made it down there safely in one. They'll be happy with that. Nazomi coming in after them. She's the uh, that's two brothers there between the fireball and the Nazomi. 
Danny Brothers. Oh, oh, that's that not good. <laughs> no. Okay, that was a spectacular spill. And here oh, we go again. We're just off to the right. We just missed another one from Brand Sense. You can see the yellow snake no in the water is, now. Oh, no sense. Sorry. Well, they're going to have to work pretty hard to get out of there before they end up in the moorings. It's definitely a crew's fault, that one. <laughs> <laughs> they all were, weren't they, Dawson? Every time, I keep telling you. <coughs> well, we'll get, him, get up and see what's going on at the front of this pack, because it's a pretty tight race, and we'll see if we can pick up a couple of 13s as they come down their first run as well to see what the state of play is with their race. Imagine signage there. I can't pick up who that third boat is in between them. It's not Typhoon. I haven't seen the bendy palm tree. No. Of, um, Might be the Cunninghams, actually. Yeah. They're still well and truly in the mix. Jesus looks a lot funnier here now, boys. I'm certainly getting a bit of FOMO. We used to love this stuff, didn't we, boys? <laughs> yep. This would be our forte. Moon still leading the race by the looks of things. Looks like they may have extended a little, if anything, as well. Yeah, Baz was quite adamant about the, the positional change in that boat, and it, you could see the difference straight away. It was. Um, Definitely the right thing to do. Yeah, look, I think the weight distribution's better, and um, I don't want to take anything away from Simon, but I, I've got to say, Matty's probably the best bound we're going around in one of these things at the moment. Yeah, well, uh, Matty reached out to me after, obviously, it happened after training one day, and I just sort of said to him, mate, it's, you know, because he also does the sheet on the 18s, and it's two completely different, um, you know, trimming a 16 versus trimming an 18 is completely different. And I said, yeah, you know, like a brilliant forward end in these, and Simon, you know, like a 49er background, you know, the forward end works the main uphill, like it's, um, you know, as you said, like he's, Matt's a great forward end, he's got the world's biggest mitts to grab handfuls of that shoot. They just look a bit bound up here, SK, I don't know what they're doing here, they're either got an issue or just, they just don't look too quick through the water here. It's only a bit more lump than they're probably used to as well, so... Maybe just need to go different. outboard a bit on the jib and shoot a bit harder or just crank a bit of... They're obviously inside out on the main. Maybe that's Cuts. time to start to ease a bit of bang off and let it rip a bit. Um, but yeah, they just look a bit bound up. He's shooting well off centre line and... Yeah. Uh, I think it looks like they've got a problem there. So yeah, just uh, some word sort of in from the club. Typhoon and Employment Hero are back on the deck. So obviously... Uh, Something terminal that, for the day. A lot of twist on that red pump. Look at that. Just on screen now, we've got Imagine Signage has just crossed Moonen, and that's the snakes and ladders on this track, and the opportunities that you get when you get up to, towards the, the Bombora. Trying to pick your spot from the, uh, from the center of the course back into Dobroyd Point. Wouldn't surprise me to see Moonen cross Big it again on the, red the next pumps one. Yeah. What's that, sorry? Yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah, the just behind, uh, There's the 13s in the background with, who's that leading, Harkin? Harkin leading. With the we Kobe got, on. Yeah, we uh, got the Cybertech and it looks like the uh, Sail Media Boat's probably second. They're going to cross jibes with the, uh, with the Cybertech coming up here. This will be tight. Just see them in the back of the shot there. Harkin with a comfortable lead. Cybertech's come back on top of the sale media. Oh god. Not was big, that like, uh, big bloody uh, <laughs> dip on Eric storage there by Army. 
hot ride down there for the 13s. Back on shot now with the botany. Yep. Alright, there's the Ebix. So they're probably a little bit back from where they'd be used to. The Ebix and the Bartley, two very good boat handling crews in the 13s as well. So they'll be looking to get themselves back into this race quick smart. Spread out quite quite a bit already, Robbie, the 13s, so. Yep. I'm not sure what Eric's was doing there. It was a big dial up. Whether they've done a penalty turn, I don't think it was a duck. Well, there, was a, there was a big port and starboard there with Army and Eric, so just didn't taking, quite uh, see them or. Taking their medicine? Yeah. Yeah. Not what you want to be doing at any time during the race. Back on with the Army here now, starting to work their way through the fleet a little bit more. Did you actually get to do any sailing with you before you damaged yourself, or was it just the uh, come yeah. along, say we all like each other, and then that was it? Well, we always we, the, the personalities fit. We had one extremely cold sail midwinter because Hugh was pretty keen to get out for a sail and um, had a couple of runs. And Trent and I um, decided that we'd seen enough. Hugh was going to be good for the season, and we did not want to go out sailing again in winter. So, <laughs> unlike you, Rob, you're yeah, normally the. Uh, oh. The instigator of training back in the day. No, oh, I was, but maybe on a day like today, not in a 25 knot westerly in the middle of winter at 8 o'clock in the morning. So back on shot here, we got Moonen coming up the uh, up the Dobroyd shore. Cunningham's below them and just off to the left, we've got Imagine Signage has gone, taken a bit more of an easterly path. I guess I'm liking where Moonen's sitting right now. Imagine signage coming back looking for a bit of east, but I don't think they've quite found it yet. And it comes back underneath the magic signage. Looking to get into this Dobroyd shore early, trying to get a lift back off to get into the centre of the course. They'll be really close at the top here with Moon and Imagine Signage. Ruffy's coming back on port. I feel like he's just off screen. Imagine now. Signage has his measure here on Imagine. starboard rights. So we'll see if he extends here or he stamps one on his nose. A cross coming up here. Tight cross. So Nathan happy to let the moon go there to try and get into this lift off the off the Dobroyd shore. He has actually come out a little bit low, but he should start to wind up as he gets into this next uh, next line. And just off to the right, we've still got Cunningham's hanging in. This certainly showing some good speed upwind. and the Cunninghams in shot. You see a few of the Flying 11 sailing home now from after their second race, so hopefully they'll be uh, getting out of the way of these 16s. These showed, 16s showed the same courtesy while the 11s were racing. Moon and back in the lead there. There'll be boat length, boat length in at the top.
imagine signage looks like they're just getting through the water slightly better than the moon in there. I thought the moon was in a spot where they might have been able to, to drive down over the top of them after that tack, but I don't think they're going to get into a leap out position. But they're certainly getting uh, getting some nice gauge off the moon. In. Ruffy will be quite happy to hold him right out to the ley line here. Don't think the imagined signage is in a position to tack and cross from where they are. No. He's got to wait his turn. He's, he's had a go. Just got to get a bit more twist on him there. Great battle. Seen both Nathan and, and Daniel go forward, open the bags, and do a couple of other things. Just take little, some notes, Toss. Just a little one percenters. Yeah. So they've got an issue now. And Cunningham's for the viewers at home look like they're heading home. Mm. I don't know what the, the issue is there. But um, Ruffy just dropped off for. the uh, imagined signage, which I'm surprised. I would have tried to stick with him. and Modern concept construction going around in third. So they're third now. Cunningham's is, is apparently out. He's still heading towards Manly. The fluid, fluid building. Up, fluid oh, up to fourth. Clint's having a good day. No, he's got Norths on his. Uh, yeah, he's had Norths for a few years. We don't talk talk about no, that, just uh, that relationship. We might not uh, mention any more of that. I think they'll certainly be happy with where they're sitting because Phil was quite happy with an eighth last week. So. Yeah, can... I spoke to Phil last night. Obviously, when uh, he was waiting to go out with you, he thought you blokes left, so he made me buy him a beer. <laughs> And then he ran off, it was like, but he was saying he's very happy with the new, um... Oh, he's done well to get back in the mix here. Treno is never one to give up, and uh, done a few seasons with old Treno, and he's a, he's a really good shoot end and uh, fights till the end. Just no fuss. No, you've had the pleasure of saying with oh, him too, Robbie. Absolutely. Oh, there's my young bloke, Ash, just trying to get out of his way. Done him a favour there. Back on imagined signage there. Still mooning. Yeah, they're still splitting these two, so. Yeah. As we come around, we're gonna get, yeah, Moonen's in a beautiful line there. As we saw down that first run, I think there's, there's a significantly better line of pressure running down the middle of the track, so. Come on, Marine, get it on. There he's out, good job. It's a great looking boat, the Army. It is. It's come up very nicely. It's won a couple of nationals. Uh, another one, it's won a couple of states. Oh, Joe, Joe won half a nationals. Different, different boat. Don't know that bloke. <laughs> great battle again between these two. Pretty much a carbon copy of the first run. Just a couple of, knot, couple of knots more breeze now. What we might do next time around, we might get a time on the difference between modern concept, how far they're behind with that slightly bigger little rig and see what the time difference is. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be hurting them today. No. I know we, we did see them go backwards a long way in the Port Jackson Championship. What I hadn't realised was that they did uh, wipe out on a yacht and, and damage the bit of gear. So that, uh, that certainly cost them a fair bit coming back up that long work a couple of weeks ago. Back on shot with our leaders, looks like Imagine that has definitely got over the top of and is sitting in the breeze of the moon and now, so their option is going to be to try and drive up and around the back of them from here. Very deep angles coming down this run. 
little bit more north in the breeze. These guys, just to give you an idea, these guys have jived on the Bombora and they look like they're going to get pretty close to this port of mark in one. I reckon they've got a couple in them, Robbie. I think they will, but certainly, uh, well, it's certainly a hot ride. Oh, it'd be heating it up, put the pressure on Wilmot, make him drive early and try and get him at the bottom. Off shot for those following the 13s. We've got Harkin still maintaining their lead, I believe. Oh, no, it actually looks like they've had a little swim. We've got Cybertech and uh, Sal Media in front of the Harkin. Ruffy's in That's actually good. a good spot there. He's in actually a controlling position, so. Yeah, I think he just got a nice nice line inside from that drone shot previously. It didn't look like he was he was going to be able to get down and get this, get this uh, depth and gauge off Nathan, but looks like he's got a Bit of a different looking shoot, maybe wider shoulders and just seems to have a bit more power now with. Beautiful shot there. What a cracking day. Great shot. Just launch these guys. Absolutely, both boats are absolutely sending it to try and get the advantage coming into this bottom mark. Yeah. This is the uh, cat and mouse game at this bottom mark. Who's going to drive first? Ruffy can just hold him out here. He, he's almost gone too far there, Nate. He's getting around and Ruffy's bound now, no, though, isn't he's, he? He's gone. Like he's, he's over. He's, he is deep I'm, there. He is really and deep. And he's going to make him... Ruffy's going to try and make him jump back here, I think. That's big play. Big play. Big play. Ooh. I can yeah. hope he's well, dropping and two-sailing you from there, just about. That's yeah, what they're that's doing. that's the risk you take, Wilmot, when you're coming back on port doing that. Great tactical racing there from the Moonen. We did that once to uh, the Brydens. We did. Didn't end pretty for the Brydens. They were not happy. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> just had to hold him out there and he did it. Imagine signing's got a bit on there. Yeah. Moon got Moon a bit loose Moon coming into wobbly. that job. Gonna have Simon, to throw it, boys. Simon must have thought he was on the 18 there. Wow, he he was like so coming, off, coming in off the wing. Good save. Well, he looked like just... he was in all sorts there. He's, he's doing his turns, which is the right thing to have done. Still got a better way to do to get below this mark. That's a big manoeuvre. Well, he's going to double jive it. Good to see. Penalty's been done. Yeah, you don't see that too often, especially in, the, especially in the 18s. Tell you what, in this way to breeze, that was uh, both some... Um, Pretty, yeah, pretty amazing boat handling from both of those crews there. And what that's done, having the Imagine signage do a penalty turns, brought MCC right back into the mix. Fluid with the drop, and Imy just trying to tag back onto the back of these front three now, trying to make it a bit more of a race. I reckon they can get up in the top top three or four there. The Fluid's Imy's got his halyard around the top of his mane. Yeah, there. Berkey, oh, what are mate. you doing? Hey, that's uh, that's swim it. That's they got another run, or can they just untie? Oh, yeah, no, no, they got run. another run to go. Oh, Climbing well. around the mark safely. Looks like nice job, Shawnee. Got to either chuck it. the red red pumps is coming in a bit hot. <laughs> we got a floating jungle gym on their right. It's just oh, oh, red pumps. stay on them, guys. Oh. A little bit loose. Big oh, Greg just, yeah, just, just swung that one down. Just swung that one down. Oh, Jay's this, not the, the biggest biggest swinger. Eric's worth watching here. This is a tricky manoeuvre. Oh. Nice work, Jimmy, getting out of the way there. Old Scotty Cotton put his crew in there. Put the bowman under all sorts of pressure I've, I've, there. I've never done that, I can, I can assure you. Oh, not, not every day. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows you had good faith in you, Rob. Yeah. You know. Now, current club championship leader. They're just chipping away these guys. Yeah. You know, these probably aren't their desired conditions, the old uh, sail racing guys, but they've just got to hang in there in these days. And 
you know, hopefully they get a few days that are more suited to their conditions. But yeah, well, they just need to try. West first time in the boat. Like he's been he overseas does, yeah. for what since December last year. He's he? pretty safe though. If you're going to have someone on for a for a sandy day like today, he's, he's one of the few fill-ins that you'd be pretty comfortable having. Yeah. Yeah, Here's the sea tech slowly climbing their way back up. They are just chipping away. Oh, that floating jungle gym's causing all sorts in the background there. Perfect spot. Oh, oh God. Who was that? Botany? Put them down. Can't see who that is. Uh, Chris Looks like Botany Axis. Yep. Chris, Chris and uh, Scott, Chris and the Scott boys will be, will be, be happy with uh, with that. Outback Marine. Around That's next. Good. Pressure on Alana there, she's trying to get in. I think have the kamikaze kamikaze he's going to come in from inside. Yeah, I think the fire oh, stopping's yeah. probably going to get inside as well now. Jamie's got that one down and away tidy. Nice work. All right, well, we uh, might venture on back uptown. Sorry, mate. <laughs> so it's the, uh, the Bartley construction to the right of screen. I'm not sure who it is to the left. Oh, Barty is a great bloke. Yeah, Eyeball and Bartley. Yes. Two young crews come through our pathway classes. It's great to see. Black shoot, I think it's that turtle, turtle smugglers from uh, Middle Harbour by memory, they have a black shoot. It's a great shot, give you an idea of how, how this breeze is increasing now. This last run is going to be hot. Miami on screen just continuing to chip away there. They're off to lure of our race leaders at the moment. They're taking a bit more of an easterly track. Probably down a little there. Maybe looking for attack back into the bombies. Not too, not too far off. in the background. That's our race lead still. what we believe is second place on screen, which it is. So Jimmy, a lot of these guys, you know, they've been around a little while, they're, they're, they're probably just trying to get themselves uh, ready for the Nationals, which mustn't be too far away. We've got States first, first. States. States coming up next weekend. Next States week. to Dremont next weekend. Yep. yep, and then followed by the second round at Belmont two weeks after that. So. Right. Probably, I mean, it's the preparation doing this racing is, is great, great uh, conditions for uh, St George. Maybe a little bit less lump than they'll see, but uh, for Dremoyne and Belmont, not so much. Maybe the top half of our track uh, will replicate it. So it's our the Plonk 13. These guys are traditionally pretty strong in breeze. They look like they're a little bit back in the pack today. So they're probably back in seventh or eighth at the moment. We're, uh, we're a fair way off our lace race lead at the moment in the 13s. They're working hard there. They got swinging hard and they're still easing a lot of money. They look very underweight. Yep. And they're actually not. I think they're pretty close. Still on weight for the uh, for the 13s. There's just a lot of breeze. Yeah. Probably wouldn't kill them to ease a bit of bang there. No. Uh, work, the work their height up. Moving back on shot, sailing really nicely now. Really got into their groove here. Board, board pretty pretty far up, that'll be their small board, a fair way up. Just got Matty bouncing down some of these waves. You can see he's got his head out of the boat now, looking at what's coming on, coming up the track. Working a bit of head so working a bit of weight. Little step forward, little bounce. Really nicely sailed. And Simo just quietly is doing a fantastic job keeping that boat flat too. It's a lot of the, a lot of the little one percenters that, that you don't necessarily see that make these boats go quick. And when you've got a crew that's in synergy like this, 
Sounds like go a long way towards winning a race. I, I, I don't know much about Simon, so he's, he's stepped on for Gussie this year. Maybe tell us a bit about Simon. I, I, I don't know too much of him. So Simon's come up through, uh, I think most of his junior sailing was at Belmont. Um, yep. They certainly live up there. He's come through 29ers. I think he may have won a Youth Worlds or certainly was very well placed up in the in the Youths in the 29ers. Uh, he's come through 49er campaigns. Has been sailing 16s on and off for quite a few years. Uh, he did the bow uh, with the Macon brothers up in Brisbane a few years back uh, and has, has been consistently in the fleet when he's when he's been around and not campaigning other boats. So uh, certainly a, a great racing background. Um, and he's, uh, he's fitting in well into a position that Gus held for a while with um, with the Moonan guys. So they obviously had a good combination built there. Uh, but, uh, but Simon is certainly building his way into that team very nicely. So back, back on shot with the imagined signage there. Little bit of a messy tack coming out of that. Managed to get it back together now. But it looked like he may have just got a little bit tangled up on the exit of that one. So there's our difference in the race lead. You can see Moon and out to the east. Imagine signage is just lifting up inside them now. The magic lift in, in the bombies is starting to do yep. its thing again. Yep. Now what do you reckon, guys? I've got to say, from what I've seen, I think if these two come around the top mark together, Moonen's probably going to have a little advantage downwind, and it's only a very short word from the bottom to the finish on the next lap. So it will be interesting to see how this one plays out. But imagine Simon just, just they're going to have to pull away to duck there, so they've, they've pulled the Moonen a long way back from uh, from that penalty turn that they had to do at the bottom mark. Just got the Botany Scaffold 13 just to the right of our shot there. It's Bella and Sophie. They are a little bit back in the pack today. I can see, if we have a look up the track, I can see the 13s. We've got Cybertech leading from... Um, just there on the back of shot. Yeah, just Robbie in the back can... of shot there. Cybertech with the blue shoot leading from the Sail there. Media 13. Safety job there. Nice work, Kobe. We've been working on those ones on our Friday night training. Beautifully done. Now I assume these thirteens. I didn't actually. We didn't actually hang around to see. I'm, 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 I'm assuming they're going thinking. to the bottom and up to the finish now. So, so these boys can hang on through the rough part of the centre. They'll, they'll be going all right. And so what was the background with the, the sponsorship for the Sail Media 13, Jimmy? Um, well, Daz came up to me one other in the club and just sort of, you know, he had a sponsor lined up and it sort of fell through and they wanted a name for the boat and rang good mate Scotty down at Imagine Signage and said, Scotty, get some signage made, stick it on this boat so they've at least got a name on the boat. Nice shot there of the Cybertech group, ripping through. Once. Certainly, certainly lovely. It's lovely to see the old Kilo anchor in the uh, in the 13th fleet now as well. It's yeah, nice, no, it's nice thing you've done there, good, Jimmy. Good to see it out and about. There it is, there the mighty little Sail Media 13. <laughs> Flew it on shot. So they're still sitting in fourth at the moment. Might be fifth actually. So we've got MCC. Imi's jumped up to fourth. They've just got through the fluid. We've got the Harkin 13 running down there, just out of shot now. They're sitting in third in the 13s. So that's our gap from third to fourth. We 
Get back on, panning around back onto our race leaders here. Imagine the signage. And that red pump's red just for our, our viewers is not on the lead lap. They're a lap down or potentially going home here. Let's see if they go around the mark. Imagine signage really did a number on Moon and they have, haven't they? they? Geez, and from that penalty turn at the bottom mark, just got a nice little lift in the east there and straight around the outside of them. I mean, and they're the opportunities that exist at the top end of this course. We get into a bit flatter water, a bit shiftier breeze. It gets very tricky. Certainly, um, Nathan and Mal on the imagined signage are uh, no strangers to uh, fluky and tricky breezes. He's tacked a good puff there, Ruff. Yeah, they've just tacked right on the front of a really nice puff there. Crack it with a bang, ease it off, get it going. Maybe slightly above the mark, they're going to be fetching to it, they'll be coming in fast here. It's got a... Tell you what, that's quite scary for the rest of the fleet, what Imagine Signage has been uh, able to do from the bottom to the top there. Beautiful set. Looks all, they make it look pretty casual. The good guys always make it look easy. Moon it just around the mark in the background there. Moon and taking the jive set, trying to get back to this shore. They're giving themselves a win with set, and they've got a little bit of a wobble on there though. Nice save. See now this, this will be interesting to see what the moon to get down this shore because uh, Imagine Signage didn't look like they had a heap of pressure going across to the east there. So your moon and going to be setting up for a drive pretty soon. You can just off to our left, you can see the imagined signage. We could see them off shot. See how these guys get through the drive. A little bit down pressure here at the moment too. And we're hoping to get a bit more as they come through the middle. I imagine signage just jive back. <laughs> that is. It's always a funny one at this top mark, isn't it, boys? Like it's all a, looks like there's sometimes breeze down in the bay here in Merley, but. Yeah, you just get back out past quarantine and you just get a big header and then you're out in the middle and, you know, I think it's an advantage to imagine signage there. Yeah, they're going to work hard the moon, but it's a pretty big deficit to, uh, to close from here. Imagine's already out into that main stream out the middle. What a great shot there. Just wondering whether they picked up a bit of weed or something on Moonen, because in like third place spot and concept is really close engage on them. Which we'll um, just going to circle around here and jump on the back of Modern Concept just to give you an idea. So there's our two race leaders. We can come back again. Later. We'll have Modern Concepts coming into shot shortly here. Beautiful. So this is our state championship winning boat and crew from last year. Minus Tyler Dransfield has jumped up onto the Red Pumps campaign this year. We've got Jared Smith driving this boat. 
These guys win the States last year. Yep. Yeah, good on them. They're doing a great job today, these guys. Yeah, I just wonder if they maybe changed their mind. It doesn't look like it's still got the same cuff. It's still, I think it is just a little bit bigger than the other uh, than the other small rigs in this fleet. So they seem to, whatever they've done with it, they, they certainly looks like they've got it a bit more dialed in now. Because I wouldn't say this is a downrange little rig breeze. Uh, still working up wind on the Pilates boat. Here's Jeremy Sharp, the oldest, uh, oldest bloke in the, the fleet, 73. 73? Wow. Pretty sure I've been selling these things at 73. Tag back onto our race lead now. Really no change to that deficit. These guys will just be sailing safely here. Nice comfy jive. They'll have one more to survive into the bottom, then it'll be a short work up to the finish. Following the 13s, and uh, for anyone watching them, we've got the uh, Cybertech group missed the finish line. They've tried to bear away back down to it and uh, swum, so the Sail Media has uh, come away with the win in the 13s. I think we've got a good young bloke steering that today, Chad Bowie. Yeah, so, well, I don't know, 50 years of uh, skiff sailing experience on board, beating up on the kids, but uh, I'm sure those two had a hand yeah, for moment, yeah. you know that. <laughs> Good old Chadley. Great shot here of the imagined signage. Just coming in for their last bottom mark round, and we do have a powerboat sitting on this bottom mark right in the way. They used to love it when coming down here, right? Yeah. 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 Moonen's come in for a. Uh, they've job set. Just still about 150 metres off the bottom mark. And you know what? These. Dial up there, a couple of tacks to go for the imagined signage now. I think Moon is just going to be happy to try and consolidate and come home with a second in this one. Certainly a keeper in this, uh, in the context of this championship. Well, yeah, after the first two heats for these boys, everything's a keeper. That's, that's correct. Well, so Moon has probably closed that gap up a little bit. I just don't know if they're going to have enough Enough runway here to, uh, to, to do any damage to the imagined signage. Here's our finish third, just straight third, in. Third, yeah, only just a short work up it does, but these modern concept constructions coming away for third. Again, I think these guys will be pretty happy with the third today. And they've done a great job. We've got Imi. Imi in the fluid off shot are going to be battling out for the fourth. I think Imi, if they can get down to this mark, are going to be comfortably round. I think the placement of this uh, finish line has caught a few of the Manly 13s out. You've got Harkin coming back down. As well, just there at the top of screen. Yeah, I'm not sure if they've actually made the bottom yet, though. I don't know if the Cyber Techs have they crossed the line there? Yeah, they look to be through it. Oh. 
do have a boat in the drink right on the line here, so the imagine it's just going to reach away. And that's a win for Imagine Signage. Big Brady very happy, and he's Moonen in second. Second place finish for the Moonen. So I'm probably disappointed not to get the win, but uh, quite happy to bank a second in the context of the series. It's MCC coming through under the drone shot there. They've, they've also overlaid this mark, so they're reaching down to the finish. So I think they have in any danger of losing any places though. Harkin just finishing to the left of screen. Yeah, so you're right there, Jimmy. They were, um, they had just uh, missed the finish and had to sail back down to it. Third place for modern concept construction. They'd be happy with that. Yep. <laughs> Probably the freshest part of the course, right where the finish is here. <laughs> it's, isn't it? Yeah. It's certainly, challenge. It's going to be challenging for some of the uh, some of the crews towards the back end. Sail racing and Eric's on shot there. I think they're going to be around. Fifth and sixth, maybe sixth and seventh. Got Aimee coming up next for a, a fourth for the finish. Yeah, that's a good finish comeback strong. from those guys. Nice and fast. Trent could go around for another I'd, four yeah, laps. I'll tell you what, yeah, <laughs> he, would, he would do another race. That's one thing we've never lacked is power in the back end of a race with Trent on board. He is an absolute weapon. I'll get Chits to save that audio and I'll just insert my name in it from back in the day. Get, get out the riding crop and ride Jimmy home. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy would be making up excuses if we picked up a plastic bag or a bit of seaweed. Always. Fluid, fluid, fluid just come off shot there, safely home for fourth. He's done a great job there, Clint. He has, I think they'll be pretty happy with that. So uh, it is a very hot fleet and uh, not the easiest of days. Plenty on, isn't there? Just first of our girl on. skippers today. Yep, Georgia Clancy coming into the bottom mark. She's left up very. <laughs> a lot of work for Atlanta to do there. Yep. Red pumps. Red pumps. Red pumps coming home in fifth. Plenty on out here. They've got. Who's that on the. Oh, yeah, so that is, Sorry, that is our first female skipper, Zoe Dransfield. Well done. Great well effort. Well done, Zoe. Beautiful job. Oh, that's not a great shot for Jimmy. Fire stopping's gone down somewhere towards the bottom mark there. Eric Storage just off shot coming home for sixth place. Followed by our current club championship leader in sail racing. Coming home in seventh, which will actually be sixth in the Manly Club Championship while uh, Eric's place is taken out. Yeah, there's the fire truck coming back out of the drink. Yeah, I wonder if they'd made it around the mark or not. There's a lot of carnage down here, isn't there, this end of the end of the course? Well, I think tightness creeps in. Breeze has definitely increased, as you said before, Does It's uh, probably the windiest part on the whole harbour right here, right? It is. James yeah. and Gemma Hopkins here, coming home in fourth in the 13s. Good job again. That is a good job. And they're certainly not the biggest crew, so they're doing well to get that boat it's got big moving through the water. They've got big jibs on the 13s, aren't they? they like, do, yeah. The Sutec Su boys. just coming into shot here. Just They've actually in. come back quite well. They've just chipped away all day, haven't they? Sort of didn't really didn't really notice them through a lot of the race, but I'd say they were maybe back in the teens, first time around the bottom mark. Just getting jet blasted in the face all day, those skippers. It's one thing I don't miss. You need the ski goggles on. Yeah, needed them.
Here's our next. We got there around the bottom mark. Bartley. Bartley. Oh, they've left themselves with a bit of work to do to get through there. Kamikaze. That'll be the second second middle harbour boat coming home in their club championship. They lost track of SKE throughout the race. Did someone yeah, see I, where they I, ended up? I reckon they might have broken a van the way they were sailing. They've had some sort of breakdown. Just got Outback Marine going off shot, but going across the line there. Lovely. Nice pick up, guys. They'll be happy with that. We've had quite a bit of carnage out here. There's a lot of boats in the drink. Quite a few getting towed home. All right, well, um, I guess we might wrap up proceedings for today. Um, beautiful nor'easter here on Sydney Harbour, one that uh, us three would have reveled in back in the day and enjoyed. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Doz. Really enjoyed finally getting you back out in the water for one way or the other. Thank you, Robbie, Jimmy. Always a pleasure, mate. Never a chore with you. Yeah, thanks, for, thanks for having me. Um, it's nice so to get carried around for once, Bury, <laughs> otherwise you know, I'd be carrying you around for the day. <laughs> Idiot. Or <laughs> us, Robbie, would be carrying him around, so it's nice, <laughs> nice to shoot you on the other foot for, for a change. No, well, uh, so thanks to all the viewers for tuning in, and um, this has been a Sale Media production for the Manly 16-Foot Skiff Club.